Um, so this morning, uh, might be a couple more. <laughs> Good morning, Lorelai. I hope everybody's well. Um, this morning we're going to do a flow for our New Hampshire. I got the new part right. It'll stick in my brain one of these days. So you're not too far from my friend John. So he just pops in for a little while, but then um, he takes off again, I think. Um, he says he doesn't do yoga. <laughs> um, but yoga is not just physical, so I think he does yoga. So spine. We're going to do um, the, the uh, spine this morning. So if you think about the ways your spine can move, we can go into flexion. We can go into extension. We can twist our spine in two ways. And then two more for a total of six is we can side bend to either side. So we'll do... Um, all six of, of those ranges of motion this morning. I'll hold her over a little bit more here. As always, I have my trusty assistant with me. I know uh, some of my Kingsville students were saying that their cat was quite in love with Bella, apparently. So um, that's funny. All right, so we're going to start off with a little centering. As we usually do. I know it's a little bit high here. Look for something to put on so it's not quite so. Um, we'll just leave it for now. It's, I'm gonna have to do this thing tilts, but that's my holder, but I don't know if that'll make it better or worse. I feel it come in the eye doctor. All right, so comfortable cross-legged seat or lying back if you prefer. Remember, you can always do that. One foot in front of the other if you're going to sit. Hands on your thighs, palms up or down or in your lap. If you're going to lie back, you can always have your legs bent, remember, and rest the inner knees together. And then your hands will go by your side, palms up or down, or maybe on your tummy, or maybe one hand on your tummy and one hand on your heart. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears, and then let them slide down your back away from your ears. And tuck your chin in just slightly to lengthen the back of the neck, letting your eyes fall softly shut, settling in to the room, onto your mat. So let go of your morning thus far. Let go of today, whatever's on the list. Let go of anxieties and worries You've been visualizing just this bubble of comfort, safety, and calm around myself, and maybe you'd like to do the same thing. Let the next hour be just for you, your body, your mind, and your spirit. Do a body scan. Take note if there are any areas that are maybe in need of that extra little bit of care or attention. Remember this can be on any level, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional. And whatever issue or issues do arise, it's not that you'll dwell on them, but acknowledge whatever's going on. And then when we check in again at the end of the hour, you may notice that there's been a subtle shift in perspective or sensation. Sense the earth beneath you now. Feel grounded. Maybe sense that earth energy rooting you. Bring your mind's eye above you, out of your house, to the skies above. Notice how you feel that uplifting energy when you bring your mind's eye there, yet you're still grounded. Yoga of any kind plays with this rooting but lightness at the same time. And then begin to do your breath work, starting to notice your breath paying attention to it, maybe noticing the temperature of it as it flows in and out of your nose, maybe switching to your nose in and out if you haven't already done so. 
Notice how the breath is slowing down and start evening it out, maybe putting a count steady on the inhale and the same number on the exhale. Or remember there's that little phrase, that little mantra you can use. I am breathing in. I am breathing out with or without the I am part. Riding your breath in like a wave coming into shore and receding. As you continue to breathe and allow your breath to deepen naturally, go inside. See your rib cage expand as you inhale. Think about the fronts, the backs, the sides of your ribs like a beautiful white bird cage. Watch it contract as you exhale. Go deeper on another inhale. Look at your lungs. Visualize them, virtual sponges floating in that chest cavity. Thank them, send them some gratitude for being healthy, for all the work that they're doing for us all day and all night. Some 23,000 breaths a day we breathe, about a thousand an hour. And just take about two or three or four, however many more at your own pace here, breaths on your own. Going within, taking time to pay attention and listen. One more breath. And then after your exhale, if you're on your back, make your way to one side. Everyone can maybe blink their eyes open and closed a few times. And if you're seated, lift your knees, straighten them out, give them a little bounce, maybe a rock from the top of the hips, point, flex. Get the circulation going back in again. And then we're gonna start off with butterfly pose and sit sideways so it's a little easier on the ankles. <clears throat> you might want to elevate your hips a little bit. Remember you can roll the end of your yoga mat over um, a little bit and uh, sit there just so your sit bones are almost rocking off it but it gives your pelvis a slight lift and a tilt forward and then your feet or foot soles are coming together. Your legs are in a diamond shape. Take an inhale and then on the exhale just start to lean forward. If you have disc issues or any kind of low back issues that rounding isn't good, then don't. Keep your tummy pulled in and just hinge at the hips. Just lean with a flat back, maybe looking at your feet. And if you can just stay marinating here in the pose, you might find that as the minutes progress, you can lean a little bit further, but always coming from the hips. If your low back is okay, then for sure let it round. Let your shoulders go, no matter whether you're in a flat or a round back. In your head, you have options. You can just let it drop if you want. That might feel nice for the back of the neck. Or like I said, you can look at your feet. Maybe looking in front of you feels a little bit better. If you have a block handy, I have mine. <clears throat> um, if you have a block handy, they can be great too. So put the block inside that diamond shape and then lean forward. Maybe rest your arms on it. Maybe it's your elbows in your head goes in your hands. Maybe at one point you can set the block on your feet perhaps and then rest your head on it if you like. And some of you that know you go into it a little bit deeper, maybe after when you feel ready and you're not feeling that tug sensation that we look for, turn it to a lower um, end and let it go. <clears throat> Steady breathing in and out through your nose. We're always looking, that's the first principle in yin is for this tugging sensation. So you can just take time to notice once you've got your breath going back to what it was when we were in that centering. Notice where you're feeling tugs. The low back maybe, a nice decompression there. Definitely in the hip joints. 
Notice where in the hip joints. Is it all on the outer side or is it in the groin a little bit pulling? Do you feel sensation down the inner or the outer thigh or maybe both? Is there some pressure in your ankles pressing into your mat? If you're letting your head go, maybe you're noticing a nice tug along your neck, maybe into your shoulders. Just taking time to notice. And then the second principle of yin is this stillness, that we try not to back away from the tugging or the tension that we feel as long as it's manageable. We don't want it too intense that we can't breathe, remember. No pain, never any pain. Definitely come out. If there's any pain, modify, back off. But the other half of the stillness to the physical is the internal stillness where we pay attention to what's happening. We try to stay present, but our mind will wander, it always does. And that's why we spend time on the breath, because that's the way you can bring your mind back. Paying attention to your breath, staying present. And the third principle is time. Holding these poses for minutes. And the reason for that, and our muscles are nice and soft as much as we can, we're tugging on fascia. And if we have our muscles engaged or tight, then we're not able to get at those layers of fascia that are near the surface of our body, but way deep. They run through muscles, through organs, they encase muscle. Um, it, they can be sheets of fascia, it can be string, fibers, strings of varying thickness. Now on your next inhale, you're gonna slowly uncurl your way back up let your head come last and then just take another breath there once you get all the way up sometimes there's a little bit of dizziness happens lean back on your hands just to release your hips and then usually wind, windshield wipers feel really great after this so do some windshield wipers setting your foot soles down taking your time I saw some more people popped in I think oh Michael's here good morning and Mika you made it excellent good 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 as I said, doing what you can. And then we're gonna swivel sideways on our mat and come into a little bit deeper of a back bend. So sit sideways, open your legs so that they're um, going out to the sides. Again, this one can aggravate sciatica and if you have tight hamstrings, sitting on a rolled up little quilt can help. Remember, you can always put a bend, um, small bend, or a larger bend um, behind your knees. If you've got two blocks, you can always support under your knee with blocks to, so that this leg can relax. Um, we're not so worried about the hamstrings with this flow, we're more about the spine, but it is a nice tug on the hamstrings too. We'll start over to the right. So inhale and twist, feel how you're getting a bit of a twist as well with this one, and then start to lean over that right leg. Same thing as butterfly. Keep your back flat if there's low back issues. Um, if not, let your spine round. If you're not using your block underneath your knee, you can maybe find a place to rest it on your shin and then set your forehead on the block like so, so that you can totally relax. It's amazing that quite often if you can um, relax your head, um, your whole body will follow suit. And of course, if you don't wanna rest your head, you can easily just let it dangle or you can keep it in line with your spine, or you can maybe find it. It look, feels better to look at your foot uh, in that direction and then let your eyes close. Remember, we're not pulling here, we're just leaning. Breathing, coming back to your breath, in through your nose, back out through your nose. Notice here, along your spine, how there's the low spine where you've twisted, there's different sensations along one side compared to the other. Even going across your sacrum, you might feel the left side getting a little bit of an elongation, a pull on those tissues, and the right side, maybe you don't feel 
too much of anything there or maybe you feel a slight compression. It depends on your body. Maybe you're feeling it quite a lot along both sides of the low spine. Remember with these poses too, you can enhance them by breathing along, or with this one for your spine, you can enhance your the, the flow by breathing along your spine. So if you start at the base of your tailbone with your mind's eye, inhale up the back of your spine, right to the base of your skull. Exhale down the front of your spine, going all the way back to the front of the tailbone, and then inhale up exhale down the back. That can help lift energy, not so much in the morning, but after a long day at the office, on the job, sitting in a chair, standing on your feet, it can be very helpful to lift energy. Now on an inhale, slowly bring yourself back up to the center, and we'll go right over to the other side. Exhale. Inhale as you twist over to the left, and then as you exhale, starting to lean over that left leg, just go slowly, find that place where you kind of stop. And then hang out there, breathing. Relaxing your arms, not pulling. And relaxing your legs. Pay attention to both your quads. Quite often, it would be the right quad here will be engaged. So try to soften it. If you used a block on the other side, then shift it over to this side. principle of yin is time that we hold these poses and the reason for that is as I was talking about before softening the muscles this is a way we can target fascia muscles those cells we know like to be worked um, do many repetitions pumped um, you know pushed to the um, to the edge as far as um, endurance and, and that and strength. But with fascia cells, this steady tugging that we feel is how we target them. And we want to soften the muscles. The softer we can get, the deeper we can get to the fascia. And when we put this static pressure kind of tugging or tension, I guess, onto the muscles, or sorry, onto the fascia, that's what targets those cells. Chondrocytes are the cells that create cartilage, and fibroblasts are the ones that create ligaments. And then we, as we know, when we create more cells, we get a little bit more length. And that gives us a little more flexibility and then we tend to generally be a little more happy when we can have a bit better ease of movement. And then there's the whole inner calm and learning how to be calm in the face of tension that we explore with yoga. One more breath. And then on an inhale, slowly bring yourself back upright exhaling when you get there. Take another inhale and then just leaning right down the center here. Block can be great here. You can rest your forearms on it. Elbows maybe and maybe your head goes in your hand. Zip. Hands. <laughs> maybe some of you it's your head goes on the block and that can feel really nice or stack two together um, depending on your flexibility. And then arms can either just stay where they are, or sometimes it's it's nice to be able to put them out to the sides like so. And just float there. Maybe at some point you put the block lower. Whatever feels right for you. <clears throat> Remembering just staying at that edge. Don't make it sensational. You want to be um, finding that comfortable tugging um, sensation. So you're noticing it down the 
definitely down the inner lines of your legs and into the groin. But notice what's going on with your spine. And again, remember, keep your back flat if it's bothering you in the low back. Let it round if it's okay. Wherever you're feeling it, you're doing it. Breathe, and if you can breathe calmly and steadily, then you know you're at an okay place. Don't be too um, relaxed. We want to have that um, tugging sensation. So you want to surrender to it, but you don't want to be in a place where you're not feeling it too much that you could go to sleep. Thought today comes from the movie Yoga Is, a good little movie. And I think it's on YouTube. Yoga means union. One teacher, uh, philosophy, one teacher's philosophy, I guess, was from the movie. She said, any form of action or being that brings one into a uniform state of consciousness within one's self and with one's relationship to the rest of the world, that is yoga. Any form of action or being that brings one into a uniform state of consciousness within oneself and with one's relationship to the rest of the world. About three more breaths here. Check in with your shoulders your jaw. And then on an inhale, hail slowly, unwind, coming back up. When you get all the way up, exhale, lean back on your hands here to release those hips and the low back. Just take as long as you want there. And then you have options. You can bring your legs in. They might want a little help after all those minutes of being apart. Loose bent legs and then arch look up or you might want to do windshield wipers again or maybe after you do the loose legs and arching um, your back then do the windshield wipers. Maybe you need to straighten them out, point and flex again. Let's take your time. <clears throat> we'll do one more deep bend for the back when you're ready and so swivel back so you're pointing down the long side of your mat. This is called caterpillar pose. So again, sit your sit bones um, on the edge of a blanket maybe or roll up your, your yoga mat if you like. And then we'll take an inhale and on the exhale, we're gonna lean forward. Same thing as before, you don't have to keep your legs straight. You can pull your heels in a little bit, use your hands beneath your knees if you like, or take that trusty block put it underneath the backs of the knees. Maybe that'll help get your um, ribs onto your thighs then, that can feel nice. And um, some of you though, remember your forward bend might look like this. You've got tight hamstrings and it's just, it, it doesn't, you, you don't bend anymore. Could be the relation of your femurs to your um, pelvic sockets as well. Could be issues in the back going on, super tight hamstrings, runners, cyclists, they always have often have issues this way. So one of the beauties about doing yin at home is that there's not all the distractions of the other people to look at and worry about how come they can do that and I can't. So this is a great way to go to the yin side as Bernie Clark likes to say. So whether you're here, whether you're here for your forward bend, whether your knees are up here and you're, it, like, it doesn't matter as long as you're getting some tug along your spine. Let your feet be floppy. Again, your head is up to you what you do. You can look down, you can look forward at your feet. You can let your head drop if you like. You can use the block if it's not under your knees. Set it on your shins and relax forward. Let your arms completely go. Doesn't matter whether the palms are up or down. Ride that breath. Find that beginning breath that you had. 
in through your nose, back out through your mouth. If you don't have a block, sometimes you can maybe find a spot to rest your elbows on your legs, or maybe your head goes in your hands if you like. So you can always improvise if you've got a cushion handy. Remember, you can always put a cushion on your thighs and do this. That's totally fine as well. Whatever's giving that spine the tug that you need. Breathing in, breathing out. About two more breaths here. Relax those shoulders. And then slowly on an inhale, you're going to uncurl and back up. And then just sitting in this nice L shape, noticing what you're feeling. So we put lots of forward pressure on our spine, a little bit of a twist. Now we'll do some extension as in back bending. So come over onto your tummies. <clears throat> and we'll start off with Sphinx pose. Um, this one, and if Greg, you're here, uh, Greg Dufour with, with Mika, remember, do this on your back. Don't hurt your, your, your spine, you know what to do. Um, so for this one, uh, you're on your, your hands, kid watching, t kid, you're on your forearms, kid watching TV pose. If you get here and you're finding that it's a little too intense, especially with all the forward bending we did, then remember you can lie your ribs down and put your hands underneath your shoulders. Um, that's totally fine. You can even, if you're finding that that's a little too much this morning, stack your hands and rest your forehead on your stacked hands and then take it up slowly into the baby cobra maybe and then further up into sphinx pose. So alignment, just make sure your elbow is underneath your, um, your shoulders here so you have that nice, nice uh, support there. Whatever you want to do with your hands is fine, whether you want to have them flat palms together in prayer is okay. You can put clasp opposite elbows. That's another thing you're welcome to do as well. Your head, again, is whatever feels right for you. Take the time before I talk any more about the head, though, to make sure your bum and your legs are relaxed so that you feel the work going into that low back. This can be really beneficial if you have disc issues. But your head then is whatever feels right. Maybe you like to look in front of you about a meter or so, so you have your, your spine all aligned right from the tailbone to the base of your skull. Or maybe looking down feels better. Or some of you might like to just let the head drop. Now we've done um, three poses, um, so I guess two, no three, with our head forward, so you might want to not let it dangle, unless it feels good. You do what feels right for you. If you're finding that you're not getting enough of a back bend, maybe at this point you open the legs, or you can float the feet up into the air. Find that sweet spot where you can soften your bum, soften your um, legs, so that there's really no effort for those feet to stay up in the air. And then notice the different position now. Feel the tissues in the abdomen, lower abdomen especially. Maybe the front of the hip joints got a little bit of sensation. But feel the tugging on the front side of your body. And if you take your mind inside to the front of your spine, 
and you might start to see that these vertebrae that are stacked on top of each other are getting a little bit of a pull in the front of them so the round bones are tipping to the back of them and the front and the ligaments towards the front are getting that nice tug and listen to your breathing In the last about 30 seconds here, if you want, tuck your chin in and then lift your chin up towards the ceiling. You'll feel, and you can hear what it does to my voice, but you'll feel a tugging in the front of your neck through your throat. Very good for those ligaments, especially if you have a job where you look down a lot of the time. And a lot of us do throughout the day, even on our free time too. We've got our heads over computers and phones and iPads. This is a great way to offset some of that forward bend that we continually do. And the aging process as well that pulls our head forward. This stimulates your thyroid gland, but don't do it if you are feeling dizzy at any point. And we're going to take a nice inhale. And then on the exhale, turn your elbows out to the side and come all the way down. Stack your hands, your favorite hand on top, let your legs float down, put your head to one side, puff your low back out with your breath. And then whatever further release you'd like, you can do windshield wipers or whatever side you're facing, draw that same leg up alongside you so you're lying with one bent and one straight leg. Do a little of both of these or maybe you just want to lie still. That's okay too. Whatever lets your back release. And then let that leg go back on down. We're going to come up one more time. It's up to you whether you repeat what we just did or if your back has had enough, maybe you go back to the baby cobra choice. If you want to take it a little bit further, come up onto your forearms again, but this time turn your hands up to the side and come up into seal pose. <clears throat> Here you can push out of your arms so you're rising up out of the shoulder girdle, or you can relax down into the shoulder girdle. Maybe experiment a few breaths in each of those, so pushing, rising up, feeling what that's doing, probably bending into your back a little bit deeper, or um, hunching down into the shoulder girdle and that's probably going to pull a little more into the lower front part of your spine, maybe a little more into the front of your hip joints as well. So figure out which one you would like today and then stay there, relaxing the bum, relaxing the leg, breathing in through your nose, back out through your nose. Your legs can stay down on your mat if you like. You can open them, as I said before. That'll increase that pressure in, in the back. The back bend will increase. Or maybe you have that sweet spot where you float your feet up into the air. Just remember to consciously relax your bum, relax your leg. Because those larger muscles, glutes and quads will help to lift the legs, but then we want to relax them we want the work going into the back. And if you find that it feels too much, then just float them down, maybe open the legs. It's not quite as intense as floating them. And remember, you can breathe following your spine, noticing how much deeper this back bend is than the first one that we did. And again, for the last this minute for this one, we can tuck our chin in and then lift your chin up if you feel that that's appropriate for you. Remembering don't do it if you start to feel dizzy and definitely don't do it if there's any neck pain. There's been any kind of whiplash or neck injuries. You might not want to do that.
complete breath. And then inhale. And on your exhale, come slowly all the way down. We tend to feel, especially after an intense one like that, a little bit fragile, a little bit broken. Stack your hands with the other hand that doesn't feel quite natural on top. Turn your head the opposite direction. Puff your low back out again with your breath. That helps to release it. And then whatever you did on the first side, doing it on this side, whether it was drawing up the knee or doing windshield wipers. Letting that leave your body. legs or let that leg go down push up onto all fours and we'll do some cat cows here usually feels nice after those back bends but if you'd rather do the circle drawing on your mat with your hips a few times in each direction that might feel nice as well totally up to you otherwise doing some cat cows matching an inhale or an exhale doesn't matter one breath to one movement. And after you've done four or five, whatever feels good, and ending with a flat back. And then we'll come down onto our backs. <coughs> Again. I'll do banana asana. And I think you guys remember this, those of you that haven't been with me for a while, I'll show you standing, you're gonna be lying. You know, cradle your head in your hands, and then we're gonna bring our right um, elbow towards our right ankle. So it's like you're doing a side bend on um, your mat. So lying down. And if this cradling of your, your head starts to bother shoulders, arms, anything, and just go into that goal post with your arms in a uh, bent position. It's totally fine. You don't have to cradle your head the whole time. <clears throat> so we're gonna start to slide over to the right. Bending, try to keep both of your shoulders, your shoulder blades, that would be, in contact with your mat as you would go over. And then move your legs over to the right as well. So it's almost like you feel like your right elbow could touch your right ankle. So you're making this nice banana shape. If you find that you're off your mat, take the time now as I did to wiggle over to the left side of your mat. And then get into position again. Relax your legs. Relax your arms. Think about your right ear, that it could go over to that right shoulder. Don't turn your head like that. Keep the back of your head in your hands. Just bring your ear to your shoulder. And then relax through the chest, the arms, the hips, the legs. Notice the pull you're getting all down the left side of your body. Cross at the ankles, doesn't matter which one. Notice how that changes the tugging. It maybe increases it. Try the other way, crossing. Notice how that's a little different. And then pick one position. Either your legs are crossed or not. Maybe you move your legs over a little bit more. Maybe you move your torso over to the side a little bit more. Make sure both your butt cheeks are in contact with your mat. Don't let them lift so we're not doing any kind of a twist. Just a nice side bend. Feels delicious all along the left side of your ribs, tugging. You can find the left side of your hip joint and down the side of your left leg, getting a nice tug right to the ankle bone. Maybe even into the left armpit, you're getting some sensation and up the back of that left arm. 
Think about what your spine looks like here. Notice how huh, it's Christmas. I'm thinking candy cane kind of a look to it as you lean over to the side. Pretty amazing when you start to think about it. The vertebrae that are in your neck right now are at the top of that candy cane. The vertebrae that are way down at your sacrum, your tailbone, flat on the floor, going up vertically and then it starts to curve over to the right. So that then the left side of these vertebrae are getting tugged apart. Steady breathing in and out through your nose. And then on an inhale, you're going to slowly come back to the center. Undo your legs. Bring them back to the center. Push into your foot soles and lift your hips into the air so that you realign your spine. And then set your hips back down. If you want to bring your knees into your chest and give yourself a little hug before we do the other side. It sometimes feels nice to do that in, in between the sides. And then straighten back your legs back down, cradle your head, and this time flip the order of your hands so it's the awkward hand, or awkward, doesn't feel as comfortable, that's what I'm trying to say. Slide your legs over to the left, slide your torso over to the left, remember to keep both of your shoulder blades on your mat, and if you are finding you're getting off your mat, then slide over to the right side so that you can keep everything on the mat. Don't cross your ankles right at the beginning. We'll just take a moment to find the shape of the pose. Thinking about your head again. Don't twist it. The back of your head is still on your mat or in your hands and it's your left ear that's coming towards that left shoulder. Relax your legs. Feel the tug that's happening all along the right side of your now cross your legs one way even if you know which way you'll end up try them both relax those legs notice the pull and try to try the other way and that's another thing you cannot try not to always get attached to one way of doing this pose with your legs try the other way just to see what it does. So you're in your final leg position. Maybe you've wiggled your torso over a little bit more. Maybe those legs have come over to the left a little bit more. Breathing in and out through your nose. contemplating your spine, noticing now how it's turned completely the opposite direction, the top of the spine curving over to the left, think about where the vertebrae in your neck are compared to where the vertebrae way down by the tailbone and in the sacrum area are. Pretty amazing flexibility we have in our body, even for those of you that think, oh, I'm not flexible, but look what your spine can do. It's pretty amazing. Another thing to be grateful for is a healthy spine.
slowly come back to the center, undoing your legs. Once again, bend those knees, plant your foot soles and push into them, lifting your hips into the air so you realign your spine. Set your hips down and then bring your knees into your chest. Wrap your arms around your shins. Give yourself a hug. Squeeze those knees in, rocking side to side. your time. When you feel ready, stretch out your legs and we'll do some final twists. It's nice we get to hold them for a little bit longer. Once again, I probably will let you do the bulk of your Shavasana on your own. <clears throat> so for twists here, we're going to um, bend in both of our knees and drop them slowly over to the right. You can put a block between your knees if you like. You can put a block under your knees to rest on if you like. Try to keep both your shoulder blades in contact with your mat. Arms are out in a T. Look over to the left. Outstretched arm. And you can reach down with your um, right hand and rest it on the top knee. Maybe the fingers go in the um, pit of the knee. You're not pulling, you're just relaxing your arm there. So it's a little bit extra weight. You might feel that increases the pull along the outside line of that leg. Maybe increases the twist a little bit. And if you're finding that this isn't quite as deep of a twist as you'd like at this point, you might notice you want to go a little deeper. Straighten out your bottom leg. So that be the right one. And then your top leg, your left one, can go further over. At this point, maybe you put a block under it or not. Breathing. Keeping both shoulders as much as you can in contact with your mat. Relaxing your shoulder. Twists are so wonderful for our spine. That's why we often find ourselves throughout the day twisting just to release tension. It's the main thing that they do. But when they're held, like we do at the end of a yoga class, they help to restore the equilibrium within your nervous system. So that leaves you with that all is well kind of feeling throughout your body. Again, this is a great pose to marvel at the ability of your spine. Notice again the spine that's deep at the back of your pelvis, facing over to the right. And then if you have turned your head, if it's okay for your neck, the spine that's at the back of your neck, behind your throat, is facing all the way over to the left. So you noticed how it could side bend, now how it can completely twirl like a spiral staircase. Pretty amazing. Often we just do a twist for a minute at the end of the class, but with this flow on our spine, we get the luxury of holding this twist for three full minutes, marinating your spine in this pose, so enjoy. center. Plant your foot soles, push into them so you can realign your spine and then set your hips down and then we'll go right over to the other side. If you find that you want to um, give yourself that hug in between then by all means do that. <clears throat> Otherwise you're dropping two knees over to the side to start off with. Opening up um, your chest, keeping both the shoulder blades in contact with your mat, looking to the outstretched right hand this time.
and just settling in and if you're finding that once you've found the shape of the pose whether your hands resting on the knees or not if you find that you want to do that deeper twist that you did on the first side then straighten out that left leg and then you'll find that your right leg can go over further this time think about your right ear that it could touch onto your mat relax your belly relax your hips don't pull with that arm just let it rest on the side of the knee and again taking the time to pay attention to this marvelous ability of your spine this time the spine that's deep in the sacrum is facing over to the left side of your mat and the spine that's deep behind your throat the back of your neck is facing all the way over to the right pretty amazing so again sending your spine taking the time to be grateful sending it some gratitude Still breathing in and out through your nose. breath and then on an inhale slowly come back to the center once more plant your foot soles push into them lift your hips into the air and then bring your knees into your chest wrap your arms around your shins give yourself a hug rock over that spine massaging <coughs> you might like to plant your palms on your kneecaps and push those knees slowly around a few times in one direction and then the same number of times in the opposite direction this massages your back in a lovely circular motion from the low to the mid back it should feel fabulous maybe one more little squeeze make yourself into a tight little ball like a prune face everything tight 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 and then let go with a sigh stretch out your legs arms by your sides a little bit of space there tuck your chin slightly if you prefer to have your knees bent for final shavasana then do that take in a nice deep breath and with a sigh let it go do that one more time deep breath in let go sink into your mat now just like you're lying in warm sand nowhere to go nothing to do fill your body with a warm healing light here of relaxation float away to a happy place or stay within but take a few minutes maybe three or four to let your body absorb the benefits of this practice in shavasana and i'll see you on thursday seven o'clock if it's different i'll let you know through instagram Namaste, my friends.